when women speak and New Jersey Poetry Events presents When People Speak Poetry and Conversation with Pop-Up Poetry Guests Our Pop-Up Poetry lineup will be And everyone out there in Facebook, social media land. This is Amira Shabazz and James Ellaby. And this is our fourth edition of our pop-up poetry, When People Speak. And how are you this evening, James? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Can't wait for this phenomenal show that we're about to have. And sit tight because we have... Uh, dynamic roster of poets lined up for you tonight and um you know we'd like to start it off um i don't know if uh you got something to say amira before we uh begin this show begin this uh when people speak well we always have a fantastic lineup there's so much talent in new jersey and uh the new york connecticut area and because we're virtual we have an opportunity to have poets that are even not in our, our tri-state area, which is a fabulous connection as far as I'm concerned. We get to hear talent, get to see talent that we wouldn't normally see um, without having to travel. I love it. So this virtual platform, it's really working for me. Some of the poets kind of shy away from it. Um, they like a live audience and that's okay. That's okay and that's all cool too. But to get to hear some of the talent, talent across the country is amazing um, as far as I'm concerned. So James, um, how about we start this off right? Yes, let's do it. Let's do All it. Right. So in light of uh, current situations through, um, throughout our country and this tonight being uh, the first presidential debate um, mm -hmm. and us sharing dinner with you during a dinner hour, um, I'd like to do a poem that is kind of re relevant for our time. Dear Gwendolyn, I am disillusioned, so I sit by Brooks waiting. I've been told we overcame. And I know I look down into the Valley of the Kings and watch them and their people march. But my heart set perched and troubled. So I'ma need you to tell Langston the burden is huge. I let it, I let it defer me for far too long. My chest burns and is really, to, really ready to explode. I have no dreams left to hold on to. Reality, reality. I implore you to all to stand back for what for, I implore you all to stand back for what my acceptance brings is a remnant of life and freedom and it will ring and it will ring so let it please I've been on pause for far too long so I'm embarrassed to say so call on Zora call on Zora and tell her that I heard and I decided to drop and take a knee and kneel for a thing is mighty big when time and distance cannot shrink it as my burden has blossomed into generations three levels deep as I stood by like 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 when they told Marion she could not sing and they tried to write her voice clean like like when they gathered them all and sold them not into slavery but into integration cutting ties of libation droplets into sands making paths that track back to Egypt land making making and asking and asking but not telling Pharaoh let my people go let my people go let my people go and i've been waiting and i've been waiting and waiting and it's up to me so can you dig it can you dig it can you dig it let me line it up for you the chickens are coming home to roost and if their eyes were truly watching god they would not have missed the evolution of the revolution which has passed them by and it's my time so dear angela I still need a revolutionary man to match my revolutionary soul. So that's what's holding up the comrades. Wait, hold up. I ain't no fascist, no fascist, no Marxist. So let me be. Dear Huey, I knew too. You came to set fire and kindle the souls. But we, but we can't stand. We can't stand and we can't be responsible if the Phoenix lied. If the Phoenix lied and burned and charged those, burned and charred those tribal birthing grounds. 
Fade to black. Fade to black. Fade to blackness. I stand too. I stand. I stand with them lost to my lost to my own senses. And if you still, if you're still looking at the enemy to save us, dear Noah, please let them know. Please drown them. Dear Maya, standing lonely in your spirit, you taught me to be phenomenal. You taught me to walk like, like I have oil rising and rising and bubbling to bubbling and bubbling and boiling in my veins. No, let me correct that. My mama taught me that. So I'll be relentless. Let the evolution of the revolution begin. Dear people, rise up, you mighty nation. Rise up, you mighty nation. Rise up, you mighty nation. Accomplish what you will. Dear Frederick, tell them, tell them, do nothing with the black man. Let him be. So that's our opening. All right, all right. Comments is blowing up for my co host We got, uh, let's go, let's go. Um, just to say to the viewers um, that are watching, um, in order to for your name to appear on this platform, you have to go to Facebook.com. I mean, excuse me, Streamyard. Uh, com slash Facebook and allow uh, Facebook to um, you know give you permission to you know to show your name on um, this platform. Just a little heads up. Um, and but then after you do that, you don't have to do it. You know, in the future. Um, but you can see we got uh, some. Let's go. We got some. You know, thumbs up. Some fire. Amir is bringing that fire. Come on, poet. Come on, poet. And say it. <laughs> so yeah, the time is right. The time is right for that kind of poem. People need reminders of what the ancestors and what those who came before us have laid down. And we need to pick up that, that banner. We need to keep up that banner and rock and roll and stop marching. Yeah. And do something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, change only comes through us, you know. So we got to definitely do our part. You know, it's not for us to sit back and, and get comfortable. We've been too comfortable. And a lot of, especially in this country, a lot of people was comfortable. And look what happened. Yeah. We got a monster in office and we got to get him out. So Tonight's the night, the first night of the debate. Guys, stay up, watch it. Write down your notes. Get out and vote. And let's move this show along. Yeah. Jim. You want to share something with our audience? Sure, sure. I want to change the pace a little bit. Um, I want to get a little confessional at this moment. Um, this is a piece, probably one of the most transparent pieces I've ever written. And um, I want to share it with y'all. It's called I Got a Date with the Devil. I got a date with the devil. And I can't be late. She told me to meet her at the local spot around eight o'clock, so I must not make her wait. I looked in the mirror, make sure I'm nice and neat, put a nice shirt on, find some shoes to put on my feet, take another glance in the mirror to make sure I'm straight. I got a date with the devil and I can't be late. She told me not to think twice cause she would always be there. And she would never stand me up cause she would always be there. And here I am at, Hell Boulevard waiting for my date. And there she was, sexy as, that, as ever, and not a second too late. We walk into the bar and find a place to sit. She orders me a Long Island iced tea and says, Here, now take a sip. Take a sip for leaving the woman that loved you the most for another. Take a sip for betraying your fellow brother by dating his baby's mother. Take a sip for lusting after a married man's wife. Take a sip for messing with your own life. And the more I sip, the more she seems right. And as I sip some more of this date felt right, but the night wasn't over. The night has just begun. This just wasn't another date to her. A soul was to be won. And I am the one, cause all I had left was her. And as I take sipped on more spirits, all I see is her. Now I'm drunk out of my mind and I can barely stand on my feet. She says, follow me. And we make our way to the street. She said, I can give you something to get by. Let's get in your car, let's go for a ride. 
then the devil lead me to a motel and and it's in this motel I'm introduced to Mo Hell. She strips down to a matching bra, bra and panty set and I can feel my manhood swell. And as she takes off, off all the rest, I'm one step closer to the bowels of hell. She smiles and says, I can give you whatever you want me to. But in order to have me, you must first pay me. And that I did. And a price was placed on my soul. And I placed my bed. And at the end of the night, I no longer felt right. And when I went home and looked in the mirror, I could barely stand the sight. I sold my soul to the devil. And that is that. I sold my soul to the devil. Please, God, give me my soul back. Thank you. Every time I hear that, I, I, I like something goes inside of me and I'm like all clenched up because I know that that came from a time in your life that things weren't necessarily the way that you um, wanted them to be. And I'm glad that you turned around and um, kind of gathered yourself and made it to uh, this part of your life journey. And that was not a, a, a very positive um, experience, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely a dark time, one of the darkest times in my life. Um, and um, it's always good to be in the light. So um, definitely uh, wanted to share that piece because I know, you know, a lot of people, they'd like to share the good parts of themselves, but uh, like, you know, they shy away from, you know, those dark moments or those dark parts of themselves. And those are the, the parts that can be healing to others and inspiring to others so they can get through their dark times. So. Yeah, someone's shouting from the, the, from the live stream that vulnerability is a beautiful thing. And like a lot of poets, you know, some poets are not able to, to go there. And when you share a story like that, you never know who you touch. So that's a good thing. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay. So we're gonna move right along in our program. The next young lady um, we're going to bring to the stage, um, I met her um, a few years back. She was uh, just beginning to um, show her creativity, her talent in the arena of spoken word. Um, she is now 18 and she's a spoken word artist born and raised in Newark. Um, she's joined a, a slam team and her team were crowned top four in the, in, in the International Poetry Slam in 2020. She's a freshman, a freshman at my favorite HBCU, Go Hampton, Hampton University. Yes, yes, yes. I have two children there with her. So um, currently we're out here um, trying to do positive things and raise money to get these kids through college. And she has a GoFundMe um, page, if those of you um, out there would like to contribute to positive youth and help her not be um, burdened with debt, um, we would strongly urge you to contribute to her GoFundMe page for her college fund. Um, she's well known in the community. She's a volunteer with the city of Newark. Um, she does a lot of work with the Cry Out Cave. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring to the stage at this point, um, none other than Lady Fadger. Fadger, how are you? Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm well. Um, thank you for having me again. Well, guys, thank you for coming. You guys can hear me well, correct? Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you listen. Yes. Um, how, how's virtual college going? Um, everyone asks me that, and I kind of just feel like I'm in an extended version of high school. I feel like I'm not really going to feel like I'm in university until I'm on campus, but um, it is a little, a little different. In terms it's of a beautiful campus to look forward to going to. Yes. Um, I'll talk more about your college experience right now. I'm going to remove myself from the screen and I'm going to allow you to do your thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Badger. Hello, everybody. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start with a poem that I've never performed before, actually. And that's just going to lead into something that I actually did my very first time performing at Women Speak. So, hope you enjoy. And I'm going to begin. I am melanated Sunni Muslim. 
American born into the technological revolution. I am mental illness meets Shakespeare. Hyperfocusing my way through King Lear, I ADHD my way to 88%, then compulsively obsessed about how my imperfections should have been left for death like my ancestors were. I am, in simplest terms, my ancestors' sperm and eggs after the Romeo and Juliet phase. I am the wife of a black man that would be left for dead. I am an asexual lover, which means I've never asked for head, but I use mine. More brains than body, and yet I still find a way to be abused by the system. I am Lauren Hill, me Chance the Rapper. I am the sound of a didgeridoo and the rat-a-tat-tat of a drum from the motherland. I am the mother of a child unconceived. I am visible. In the simplest of the simple terms, I am me. I am quite literally an entity of divine and feminine energy. I am woman, a young one currently, but age and wise is what I am meant to be eventually. And unfortunately, some of my sisters that are older than me physically have stunted their growth mentally. And for the remainder of this century, a little girl is what they are meant to be. But for those of us who are women, allow me to jog your memory. Let me remind you of one thing. Know that Father Time does not matter when it comes to the power that Mother Nature can bring. Know that you speak life through your words and be aware that things are bound to change when women speak. Thank you. Yeah, that's my piece. Thank you, James. I have a mystery man working behind the scenes. We're, we're working on a new platform here. Um, usually we do the Zoom. Uh, we've moved on up in the world. We do StreamYard now, and it's kind of a learning experience, but I like it. So, Fedger, that was a new piece, all right? Yes. Um, I enjoyed it. The audience enjoyed it. And um, how did it feel performing it? Um, I haven't performed something new in a while, so kind of refreshing. Yeah. So let me ask you, are you going to keep your connections um, going when you get to college on actually on campus and start a spoken word um, situation down there in Virginia? Yes, I plan to. OK, it's 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 open. It's wide open. We need you down there. Yeah. All right. um, I like to thank you very much for joining us on When People Speak and hope to see you next time. And you can go hang out in the VIP room. OK, thank you. Thank you, Badger. Hey, James, welcome back. Hey, hey. So we're going to keep this show moving. And I have the privilege and honor of introducing our next uh, pop up poet. And um, I'm happy to say that this poet um, has inspired me through my journey. Um, she may not realize it, but, you know, when when I was talking about that dark time, um, and I was just coming out of that dark time. She was definitely like one of the poets that inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing as a poet and, and the importance of sharing yourself and opening yourself up um, to your experiences and, and allow them to be example of healing for others. Um, but before you know, we bring her up, uh, this next phenomenal poet, by the name of Paradise. I uh, want to tell you a little bit more about her. She is the founder and CEO of The Art of Paradise and is a native of Jersey City. Um, she found her love and passion for poetry amongst fellow poets at the renowned Bogies. And that's crazy to me because I probably right, right around the time she was on the scene at Bogies, I probably that was probably the time that I left the scene. Um, so that when I read that, I was so happy because you know, Bogies is like a renaissance, you know, time and a big catalyst to why Jersey poetry is such a thriving and growing community. But um continuing on, um and um her gift is not of hers, but to inspire, uplift and motivate others. The Art of Paradise serves as a platform uh, for artists to use their gifts for healing and uplifting. So at this time, I am honored and a privilege to bring to the stage the one, the only Paradise. Um, it's an honor and a privilege anytime I'm afforded the opportunity to share my gift with you. This particular piece is called Poetry. Poetry is my therapy. Music feeds my soul. 
Dance is my weapon against depression. And you, you stripped me of everything. Family, friends, thoughts, beliefs. You stripped me naked for the world to see of my dreams, goals, purpose, for your purpose, for your own personal gain, placed me on mute, silenced my voice, deprived me of the very essence of me. You preyed on me when you should have been the main one praying for me. False prophecies prophesied by false prophets, camouflaged by lies, paralyzed by the very thing that was supposed to protect me, the very person that was supposed to protect me, infiltrated false love, festered until it manifested into a toxic waste of my time. But I'm here to declare that I am no longer a zombie walking amongst the dead. See, poetry, yeah. She's my therapy, music, yes, he feeds my soul. Dance, dance is my weapon against depression. Now I understand why I had to divorce the course. The courts, the cost was not my destiny. You were not destined for me, disdain. Your name tastes like pain. Taste my pain. My God, see, I no longer call on the name of the God you serve. My father said I'm destined for greatness and destiny, she chooses choices as goals inspire purpose, discipline, determination and dedication. And you, you no longer control me for I walk freely, boldly, proudly, confidently naked for the world to see everything. Dare you? Dare you doubt me? Dare you question me? Dare you question who I am? Dare you question whose I am? Daughter of God, purified by the fire, rose gold, I'm covered in his blood. Can't no devil in hell frighten me when it's God who resides within me. See you, you thought you silenced me, place me on mute, but my God, my voice is my purpose. And my God said, speak, speak to every situation, into all circumstances, into every artery, into every vein, into brain waves, speak, spoken words, scribbled on broken lifelines, resuscitating situations, bringing them back to life. Speak life over your life. See this, this is my purpose. See this, this is his plan. See, I'm destined for greatness. It has been preordained that success is my shadow. Everywhere I go, it shall follow me. See, I'm voice for the voiceless. I'm hope for the hopeless. I'm life for the lifeless. I'm a poet. T-R-E-E, -E, planted firmly. I am paradise, Christy, who he called me to be. Thank you. That was amazing. Um, what inspired that piece of poetry? Tell me, you have to tell me. So what had happened was, as James said, I always <laughs> write, most of my poetry is testimonial. And I once was married for uh, about three years and unfortunately ended in divorce. And it took me years. I've been divorced about six years at this point. Mm -hmm. And it took me years to find the words to bring it into a poem to express what I felt about the entire process, mm -hmm. what up to it. So there was joy, there was sadness, and at the end, there was happiness. Yes, yes. After. Natural cycle. And there's that poetry again as therapy. It's a wonderful tool and you're a wonderful talent. And I am very, very blessed to have heard your poem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, you're welcome so much. That was paradise. <laughs>